Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to today's Aspen Avionics webinar. Uh, my name is Perry Coyne. I'm the Director of Marketing Operations for Aspen. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into the functionality of the Aspen Display Series. We hope you'll learn something that you didn't know about the many features this affordable EFA system offers. Today, we have Scott Smith, our Director of Sales presenting, as well as Michael Studley, Director of Field Service and our Northeast Regional Sales Manager. Uh, and Mike will be answering the Q&As during the presentation. We also have a very special guest today who is an accomplished pilot and just installed a new 2500 Aspen Max system. But I'll let Scott introduce them. Housekeeping items before we begin. Please use the Q&A box to submit your questions. Please do not, please do not use the chat function. Um, using the Q&A box only will enable us to answer your questions more quickly and more efficiently. Uh, we will also be recording the webinar, which will be available on Aspen's YouTube channel, as well on the Aspen Video Library, which there's a link on the Aspen Avionics website homepage. Lastly, um, we will revisit the questions submitted during the webinar, so all that can benefit from the answers provided. We will also address any unanswered questions at the end of the presentation. Now, Scott, I'll toss it over to you. Thank you, Barry. Appreciate that intro, and welcome, everyone. And we do appreciate your time uh, joining us today. Um, like like Perry said, we're gonna we're gonna dive into our, the product line and kind of talk about the Mac stuff, talk about some new interfaces, new autopilots. Um, but first and foremost, I want to welcome uh, Valerie. She's the uh, uh, Skyline Baron pilot, and she is. Uh, we're just so happy to have her today. How are you doing today, Valerie? Good. How you doing, Scott? How you doing, everyone? Doing great, Val. So so uh, just give us a a little bit of a uh, insight to you and kind of, you know, where, where you, you, how you came into aviation and what, what drew you to, uh, to this. I mean, we, we, you know, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Valerie has a, uh, a channel on uh, YouTube post a lot of her adventures and she's posted some several things on, on her, uh, on her uh, site there. Uh, I'm trying to get the, my, uh, screen to change there we go there we go there she is so anyway so valerie ha hails out of florida she's got a uh, beautiful uh beechcraft baron 58 tc that she runs around in um and she has a youtube channel and instagram accounts and for those of you who don't know please uh, uh visit those and follow her join join those she's got a lot of interesting content um but anyway valerie yeah give us a little bit of insight uh to you and your story and, and kind of a, a little back history there for uh from here yeah sure scott thank you um, my name is valerie larson skyline baron palette as uh, scott mentioned i always wanted to become a palette uh, you know I, I i was a little girl and dreamed about becoming a palette however i didn't have anybody in my surroundings who were palettes so life got in the way i met uh, my husband Eric and back in 2010 he told me that he wanted to become a palette and I'm like oh my god I always wanted to become a palette as well so he got his uh, pilot license and um, back in 2012 and I kind of started after him got about 30 hours back then live got in the way started again 2016 and I haven't stopped since got my private seaplane rating, instrument multi-engine rating. We have a beautiful Baron 58 tubal charge. Uh, we fly it out of uh, Antiquers Aerodrome uh, down, down here in uh, South Florida, Delray Beach. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, grass trip, one mile. And uh, yeah, we love to share our adventures. We love to go to the Bahamas, Heaven's Landing in Georgia. Georgia, and hope you can uh, join us and, and see uh, what we have nice. on our channel. Thanks, I didn't know you were a seaplane pilot. Yes, I have my seaplane I, rating. I'm super jealous. That's one of my uh, bucket list items. I want to get my seaplane rating. For it's sure. amazing. Amazing. So one of the best rating. Where'd you do it at? 
at uh, Jack Brown's. Oh yeah, that's that's where I want to do mine at. And uh, that was that was a pretty good experience. I've heard everybody I've talked to has done that, so that was great. Amazing, amazing. Highly well, suggested. Okay, well, good. And and Val Val just uh, she had a single screen Aspen Pro Max, and she has upgraded since then to the twenty five hundred. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started here on the actual presentation. We'll bring Val back on. Uh, feel free, like Perry said, to hit the uh, Q&A. Use the Q&A uh, and ask your questions as we're going along here. And then we will address those at the end of, uh, of the presentation. So like I said, my name's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take off my camera as well, just so I'm not uh, distracting there and uh, go ahead and go through the presentation. So. I started in Aspen back in 2007, and it was before the product was even certified. So I've been with the company almost 15 years, and um, it's been a great, you know, really good adventure. Lots of fun. Uh, made a lot of friends over the years. I started off with this uh, SR22, the Cirrus, and what a beautiful machine that was. For those of you who have those, you know, and for those of you who fly them, you know. Um, and I upgraded the uh, Cirrus the first time around with a single screen. And then I ended up uh, adding a couple more screens and ended up looking something like this. And so this was the uh, uh, the Cirrus screen. I ran around that for about six years, but uh, almost uh, 20, 20, a little over 2000 hours on it and uh, uh, flew the territory. So I'm also like sort of director of sales now. Back then I was a uh, sales manager and I covered the, uh, the central Southeast. So I got uh, central US and down uh, through uh, Florida. So got to run around in that, but about three, four, 400 hours a year on that aircraft. And then uh, my wife kept having kids. We needed a couple more uh, extra seats. And uh, along came the uh, A36. And the A36 was a beautiful machine. We had, uh, I ended up putting tip tanks on it, turbo normalizing it, and really enjoyed that aircraft for uh, several years. And uh, it, it came time, a TBO came around, needed a new engine and started looking to options uh, on that. And um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but uh, this was the panel in the Bonanza, which uh, was really clean up. So that's a 1976 A36. And as you can tell, you know, with the Aspen system, uh, you really can clean things up. I put the J JPI in there, mon uh, engine monitoring and um, a couple of uh, Garmin navigators and just really clean that, uh, that panel up. And back then, before the Max, you still had to have a backup attitude indicator. Today, you don't, but we're, and we'll talk about that. But I had to, had to back up uh, the Sandia system here was my backup. So my only steam gauge in the whole thing was my little uh, uh, O2 gauge. So that was my joke I always made was my only, only uh, uh, steam gauge left was the O2. Um, anyway, needed a, a new engine. I decided to take the money uh, for, for that and sell the Bonanza and ended up with this uh, Piper Malibu, which I fly today. And for those of you who met me over the uh, last, uh, I think, three or four years, you, you've probably seen me in this and, and visited with me at the different open houses, Sun and Funds, Oshkosh's, AOPAs, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, this has been a, uh, a really nice upgrade. It's been a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. I didn't realize how nice pressurization was. Um, and with the kids and everybody on board, it, it makes it so, so easy not to have to use oxygen and and whatnot there so so great machine the the, the piper malibu now this has got the 550 in it the continental it's an 86 and it's got the uh, twin turbos on it i run at lena peak and i end up around 17 gallons an hour in the mid mid to upper teens low 20s 23 is about as high as i like getting it and i still get 200 knots so it's a it's a good travel machine um and i this is my latest panel here um and, and it looks kind of similar to the to the bonanzas. You can you, you can kind of see the the layouts that I like, and and you know you're you're seeing a um, just kind of kind of what I've done over the years with the different panels. But the point of all that is, guys, when I'm talking to you today, I'm talking to you from experience. I've got um, over eight thousand hours of flight time. I'm a CFII. I'm very active in aviation. I have several students I'm running all the time, um, and and what the point of all that, like I said, is just that when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you from actual experience of using the systems. Um, I probably have uh, actually on the Aspen systems close to 6,000 hours alone just on, on the Aspen systems. So uh, with that being said, 
let's jump into kind of our uh, flagship product here and what uh, what we got started with uh, back in the day. And I'll go into the Mac stuff and what, what that means to you. Um, but our uh, uh, EFD 1000 Pro um, is, is kind of where it all started with. And that was a system or is a system that allowed you to pull out a couple instruments, slide this in, and it was uh, easy to install. It's easy to install and it works with what's in your panel. So, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit, but the, but the whole idea is we're, you know, Aspen Avionics, we're a retrofit uh, company. We're designed for the aftermarket to upgrade your aircraft that you already have existing in the field. And you can start small, um, you can start with one screen and you can grow. You can add uh, additional screens as time goes on, um, as you know, you wanna invest. Uh, you start with an E5 and work your way up to the Pro and then the two thousand and the 2500 system and what's great about aspen is that you're literally just paying the price difference and uh, between between those systems you don't have to throw the old away and start over um, so so that's been a big attraction uh, as far as the system goes when you're looking at it um, everybody's used to you know the screen over here and what it looks like but if we turn it over and look around um, you see the can in the back here uh, it's got your pedostatic inputs up on top. We've got uh, your, your IO boards. We've got your ADAHARS up here for your up, down, left, and right. And we also have your backup battery built in, which uh, we've got a new uh, lithium ion battery that allows uh, uh, removal of more backups. And we did that with the Max. Um, the cooling fan down here, it actually draws air in through the cooling fan and runs air over the system and, and out the back here. So that's what we use to, to cool the system. The other two components that make, make up the system is the RSM or remote sensor module. And what that is, it, it looks just like a GPS antenna minus this little, little fin on top, but uh, it's actually a housing device and houses a magnetometer for the heading source on your HSI, your backup GPS and GPS antenna, along with the OAT probe, which provides a solution for your air data computer, for you know true air speed, ground speed, OAT, and uh, and whatnot there. And the last piece of the puzzle here is your ACU or analog converter unit, and what that does, I call it a little magic black box that allows us to communicate with everything in the aircraft from an old uh, KX-170B all the way up to the new Avidyne and Garmin navigators and everything in between. It also allows communication with uh, the autopilot, and whether you've got an older autopilot, uh, Century, King, S-Tech, um, we will interface with those autopilots using that ACU. So you'll hear ACU quite a bit when you're talking when we're talking about autopilots. Um, and as far as the installation goes, um, whether you're doing one, two, or three, you have the option, and this is the way it comes with this. Uh, um, mounting bracket and it just goes over your existing holes um, that you're going to pull out your attitude in this case this would be pulling out your attitude indicator pulling out your hsi put the mounting bracket up there and it slides right into that spot without doing any panel surgery and for those of you you know aircraft owners that's that's kind of a big deal if, you know you don't want somebody cutting in your panel you don't want to cut a new panel you like you know you like the layout you like the way it is um, we we provide the option for that and also uh, that cuts down on labor obviously now, Valerie has a cool little uh, video here, which I'm going to try to try to show um, where she actually did an unboxing. And Valerie, are you still, uh, hop up here with me and and we'll talk about this uh, while. And how long ago did you do this, Valerie? Your unboxing. How, when, when was this done? Uh, this was done. Can you hear me? I just yeah. uh, I just got my yeah. Bluetooth well, let me, on. Let me throw you, uh, I mean, hey, wake up. No, no. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Yes, uh, this was done back in uh, 2020. Okay, so a couple of years ago here. Okay, good. So we'll just, yeah. I'm going to show this for just a second. Uh, our, 2021, I'm sorry. Okay, so I can hear you. Yeah. So there's Eric, her famous husband. Max. So this is kind of their unboxing. There's colors, information. Look at that. It's just going to be sliding in. Send call, install. You guys can hear such, the audio, right? Such an easy, Valerie, you can hear easy the audio installation. Yes, yes, I can. 
Okay. I like to see the other one out and this new one in. We'll compare both. All right, let's make this install. So this was. What are we going to do today? I'm going to be doing a Aspen Max upgrade today. Okay. Uh, interfacing the audio to the aircraft audio. Excellent. And that's a pretty easy uh, swap, right? Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, everything's way supposed to be. All right, we'll find out. Yeah, Sarasota avionics are great. And we were very happy You'll with You'll notice them. we uh, actually shipped that a brand new unit ahead of time with these max trade-ins. So you're not, you know, you're avoiding a lot of downtime. And I think, Valerie, you guys did this in uh, a couple hours in the afternoon. Does that sound right? It was so easy. Yeah, it was such an easy installation. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we we waited we waited over there. I mean, we we could see everything. Yeah. Yeah, very very simple. So there you can see the mounting bracket and kind of how the unit grabs onto that, slides in, and he's removing the pedostatics in the back and pulling off the wiring, the actual sub D connector. But I mean, you get the idea. I just wanted to show this, and and and, and like we said at the beginning, you know, jump on her channel. Um, you can see all of her videos, including this one. Um, but that gives you, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of, uh, of how that process works. And it's just as simple as that. You literally slide out the old one, slide in the new one, and, um, and move on. Plug and play. Yeah. Yep. Well, good. So that was, that was pretty painless. Valerie, you, you had a good experience doing this, I'm sure. You're saying yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a really good experience. Really simple, and um, yeah, the Pro Max compared to the other version we had for uh, battery life, it you know it, it is is night and day. Uh, I guess because oh, yeah. I mean I never really noticed the difference, but the clarity of the screen is uh, is much nicer. Not to mention the also the attitude indicator was. Uh, was a great addition to uh, to our panel when we had the uh, the one. Okay, thousand. well, good. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah, first appreciate that. I'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we're obviously going to jump into a bunch of the uh, the bells and whistles when it comes uh, to the Mac stuff, but but um, yeah, just the overall experience of doing that upgrade, you know, when you do the trade in, was uh, was was favorable. So that's that's good. But anyway, so we're. Uh, uh, as far as the interface goes with the Aspen systems, we interface with everything, like I was talking about earlier, from an old, the old KX-170Bs, 155, 165s, all the way up to the new um, Avidine, Garmin, uh, Honeywell products. Um, we have uh, the same way with the autopilots. And we also include uh, recently the AeroCruise 100 interface, along with the Genesis 3100 uh, system, which is a uh, which is a really slick system. I'll talk. I'll talk about that more. We also have an uh, interface with the 55X for those of you with the S Tech 55X. We have a we have a really nice uh, detailed interface, and I'll I'll talk about that in a little bit with uh, with that system. And uh, recently, the um, Trio Trio Autopilot has just uh, added an interface as well. So there's a lot of good goodness there. Now I'm going to jump into you know why uh, I want to take away a lot of the anxiety out there. Folks are nervous about taking out their old instruments that they've been using for their whole entire flying careers. You know, so those of you who've been flying for years and years and years, and you've got the the old standard uh, steam gauges here. An example: attitude indicator, HSI, uh, airspeed, turn and bank, BSI, and altimeter. You know your your six pack basically um so when you put the aspen system in i want to point out a couple things here the attitude indicator and the hsi is right where you right where you've always had it your airspeed indicator is right where you you always had it as well so it's in the same place your eyes are going to go to the same place now the differences are a digital tape okay so that takes a little bit of getting used to it, a little bit of a learning curve, just getting those eyes trained to see that. But the point of it is the airspeed indicator is still where it's always been. And so is your altimeter. 
altimeter still where it's always been. What's cool about our altimeter though, we have an altitude alerter now. You're gonna gain an altitude alerter. So it's gonna give you an audio call out to your headset to tell you when you're 15 seconds away from that altitude. We also give you a trend, a climb and descent trend on the tape here that shows where you're gonna be at in six seconds. So that's very useful. Your VSI is made up between an actual digital graph here and a, a uh, feet per minute call out right here where, and, and so what you'll, what you start doing is you adjust your pitch and then you reference that feet per minute for, for where you're trying to get to. So if you're hand flying the aircraft, like, you know, I'm trying to get 500 foot a minute down. So I know in my aircraft, I use that first line, which is two and a half degrees instead of, uh, instead of every five. So note that as well. See how much bigger the scale is on the attitude indicator as opposed to what you've had traditionally. So instead of a line every five degrees, you get a line every two and a half degrees, which makes it very precise. So I make those small adjustments reference here and I'm about 500 feet a minute and then make those uh, little trims. Uh, your turn and bank is made up between your slip and skid here underneath the pointer. And you also have a rate indicator pops out by the heading here that gives you half standard rate for the first line and then standard rate for the second line. So if I turn the aircraft, I make sure I'm coordinated. And then I look here and see how far I am off from being standard rate. You know, I start off on about a 18, 20 degree bank to establish that standard rate turn. And as uh, far as looking at the face of the unit, I want you to look at the uh, little side items here. So you got the power button, you got your plus and minus, which is just your zoom for your map. So you can zoom in and out, whether it's a PFD or an MFD, you're zooming out using those range keys. The um, menu key is your friend. That's like a menu is my friend. I want to see what I could do to customize or change that page. I hit the menu key. All your hot keys are changeable. Depends on what I'm controlling and what I'm doing. But those those will be different items. But they're uh, the line select. Uh, I call them hotkeys. Then you've got your two knobs: the one on the right, one on the left, and the one on the right, lower right, is the one you're going to use the most. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. You got your bearing pointers on the two outside buttons here, and then the center is your nav source select. So it selects for GPS one, GPS two, nav one, nav two. If you have an E five, it's one GPS and one nav. So if you just break this down and split the unit in half, the left knob is going to control the left-hand side between course and airspeed bug that you man, you know, you put in to use for your reference. I, I put 120 knots in because I climb out at 120. I do my approach to 120. Everything's kind of at 120. Over on the right-hand side, you, you push in on the knob to change between heading and uh, altitude select and minimums and also barrow. So I can cycle through those things just by pushing in the knob. Um, and then it turns magenta for whatever I'm controlling. So I, I push in the knob, turn the knob, and I'm controlling. Controlling is what pops up first because that's what you're gonna do. So you literally just reach up, turn the knob, heading bug pops up and you're controlling heading. As far as your attitude indicator goes, like I said before, we give you a line every two and a half degrees instead of every five. So it's a nice large scale. Um, and if you ever have a problem with your attitude indicator, it makes it very obvious as we say, hey, cross check your attitude. We'll also give you a red X um, and makes it real obvious. We, we, you over pitch or under pitch, which means, you know, plus or minus 18 degrees, we're gonna give you these nice chevrons that say, hey, go down or go up. So it makes it easy to identify when, you know, which direction to go. There's what it looks like if you ever have an attitude failure. So it's very obvious for those of you who have had a uh, either a vacuum pump failure, attitude indicator failure, you know how they just kind of slowly roll off the side or one way or the other. I was actually over Cincinnati one night coming back from the Northeast in a uh, Mooney 201 and I got a call from ATC and they said, hey, check your altitude. You look like a couple hundred feet off. And I looked over and I'm like, yep, sure am. And looked up and my attitude indicator was saying I was straight and level. And of course the autopilot I had at the time, which was a KFC uh, 150 said, the autopilot, the, the attitude indicator is straight and level, but it wasn't. I actually disconnected it, brought the aircraft back upright, and it was about a, about a 10 degree bank and, and going down. So 
that's the difference is you get a, a very obvious sign that you have an attitude failure. As far as our airspeed indicator goes, we have a, a very useful airspeed indicator. We can put your V-speeds on here. Um, and, and for those of you who, who utilize that, like VX, VY, which is everybody that flies, then uh, that, that is a, a very useful tool to put up on your airspeed tape. You have a failure again, very obvious, you red exit. And if a pedo gets blocked, it's uh, real obvious. Um, so here's some examples. We do the VNE, and for those of you who are flying twins like Valerie, you, very important blue line, the VYSC, best, best uh, single engine uh, rate of climb, and um, also your uh, minimum controllable airspeed for uh, twins red line. Because what happens when you get below red line? It's not a good day with a uh, single engine. Some other examples of, the, of uh, different airspeed tapes. Now, this is, you know, referencing, you know, your, your red, your yellow arc, green arc, um, white, and so on. But it's, but again, it's getting used to looking at that tape. And, and when you're flying it, don't look at the single digit, look at the entire graph. And it's the same way with uh, altimeter. You've got to look at the entire graph, not just the single uh, digit. And obviously we can put kind of any, any V speed you want up there. So for the, on the altimeter side, some really nice features I mentioned a while ago a little bit, but that altitude alerter is, is something I use every single flight. Uh, you dial in whatever altitude ATC tells you to go to when you're 15 seconds away, you get an altitude alert comes through your headset says altitude. And then once you hit that altitude to get more than 250 feet off, the same voice comes through and say, hey, dumb, dumb, you're leaving your altitude. Is that what you really want to do? And so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really nice uh, tool to have. We also can interface with uh, radar altimeter. And another big, huge feature that I love is the uh, minimums. And minimums, um, you just drive that off your approach plate. So you look at your approach plate, you reach up on the ASP and you hit minimums and you dial in whatever the minimums are. And as you're coming down the glide slope or you're, or you're shooting an approach that's non-precision, non you're coming down and you're looking for this altitude. You know, before we're looking at our altimeter, wait until we get this altitude, get this altitude, get this altitude, we're working for that altitude. Um, now on your tape, you're gonna see a Chevron, a yellow Chevron, or sorry, five, uh, 500 feet, you're gonna get a green Chevron. And then at 100 feet, you're gonna get a yellow Chevron. And at that point, you're gonna hear a voice come through your headset say, approaching minimums. And then you're getting a red and yellow Chevron at minimums, it's gonna say minimums. So it makes it very obvious when, when you hit uh, minimums. Your vertical speed, we talked about that a little bit. Um, basically you get the, uh, the graphical and uh, textural. So your HSI, let's, let's break that down a little bit. You get the 360 degree mode. Um, when you're using, one thing I'll mention here, and I probably got another slide of it coming up, but the heading bug is really easy to identify where that is. We have a little dash and it comes off the aircraft symbol that goes to the heading bug. Um, and the point of that is it just makes it easy to see where it is as you turn the knob. Um, we also have your uh, track bug here, a little cyan track bug. That's what you're tracking across the ground. So if you're hand flying the aircraft, you turn or push that track bug over on top of the green Corsair. We have um, the turn rate indicator as I've shown a while ago, but here's a little better example of it. So as that bar, bar comes out from the heading, that would be standard rate right there and that's half standard. So here's an example of uh, 100, you know, arc mode. If you wanna feel like the big boys, you can put, the, you can put your HSI in arc mode instead of 360 and uh, gives you that arc look. And, and, I, and I, you heard me say this a couple times today, but Aspen is really good at giving you options because everybody's brain works differently. And we like different layouts. We like, you know, people like north up, track up, people like, um, you know, auto zoom on, auto zoom off, all that kind of stuff that, you know, everybody's brain works a little differently. So what's nice is you have options with the Aspen. So a um, couple of things you'll see on your HSI here. 
uh, you get, I really like this. So at a glance, I can kind of see where is my next fix? How far away am I? In this case, it's 312 degrees, 124 miles. I'll be there in an hour and nine minutes at my current speed. Um, here's the arc mode and kind of arc mode with your uh, course deviation indicator is off a little bit. Makes it very obvious. Here's your two from flag. We got a from, I mean, a two flag. And last but not least, the arc mode with the CDI kind of just right underneath the aircraft symbol. So those are options that you have on your setup. Okay. One of my favorite features in the whole system, and I just we just kind of broke this down just so you can focus on the glide slope and localizer. So when you're shooting an approach and you're shooting an LPV, a WAS approach, um, or an ILS where you get glide slope and localizer, uh, there's nobody that does it better. I mean, you've got everything you're going to need in the top part of the screen. I'll go through that a little more detail, but your localizer's here, glide slope's here, right around the attitude indicator. So what you'll find is your scan's going away because everything you need is right here in the top part of the screen, all the way down to minimums, right? Because we've got to have minimums over here on our altimeter tape. Super useful to have a blood slope and localizer there. Here's some more examples of, of the different uh, indications on your CDI. And also we can overlay with just a single screen, uh, the Pro Max, we can overlay all these different things on top of the HSI. Now, I don't like a lot of clutter on mine. So I usually bring mine down to where I'm just showing what's in my flight plan. So I'll show this, I'll get rid of all this other stuff. Um, but you have the option to turn those on because some people like, like having the nearest airports, VORs, NDBs, intersections all on. And you have the option to do that. So it's uh, it's nice, nice to have those options. So if, as we're looking here, we talked about the range of power key, menu key a little bit earlier, but with the single screen Pro Max, Here's the available pages. And as you add more functionality, like ADSB uh, unlocks so you can display traffic and weather, or you um, have, it comes with synthetic vision, you'll have synthetic vision. So these are available pages. So we, we're looking at one of three pages. So I push that button, it's gonna show me the other pages available. But in this case, here's my minimum. So if I wanna set my minimum, I'll simply press that button and I would dial in the minimums using that right hand knob. 360 or arc mode, we, we showed that a while ago, but that's how you change it, it's just that simple. GPSS, or I call it George Pilot Super Stud, uh, a named well-earned. GPSS is roll steering coming off of your navigator. So if you have a 430 or equivalent, or that means just newer, newer than a 430 navigator, you're gonna have uh, GPS roll steering to the autopilot. As long as you have a heading bug on your autopilot, you'll get roll steering. What does that mean? It means you're going to take away all crosswinds. No, no more crosswind components, all that goes away. Basically what the autopilot does, it thinks it's in heading mode, but the GP, it's gonna be taking information from the GPS directly to the autopilot through our heading line in the system. So what you do when you push GPSS, that changes the tracks to the autopilot where we're sending heading to say, okay, fly 183 in this case, if we're in heading on the autopilot, the autopilot's gonna turn over to 183. Once I hit GPSS, now it's gonna put desired track of 166 and, one, and 166 ground track together. It's gonna to put those two numbers together. It's gonna to fly that, it's gonna fly your turn anticipation, all of, and uh, your holding patterns, your procedure turns and everything based off of uh, whatever's in your flight plan through that GPSS line. It's a very useful tool. Um, almost worth the price of admission just for that. Flies the airplane way better than I can. Then your barrel button, you press that and you dial in the barrel, right? Here's your barrel. The um, flight director will overlay a flight director, but we do not make one up. In other words, your autopilot must have the capability to draw or, or uh, display a flight director. Um, so check on that. If it does, we will display it. Um, with exception of the Bendix. We can't do the Bendix, but we uh, basically do the rest of them. Your ILS, we talked about that with between ILS uh, and uh, WAS approaches between glide slope and localizer here. Now the air data bar, that's what separates the attitude portion and the HSI. The air data is 
a another one of those gee whiz really nice features to have because what it does is shows us what the winds are doing to us as we're climbing out or as we're coming into land doesn't matter if Val's in her seaplane landing on the lake you can see what the winds are doing to you so it's a super useful tool it also gives you your true air speed your ground speed oat how hot or cold is it outside what's the actual wind direction and speed all that gets outputted to your navigator as well. So if we go back to where we have a 430 or equivalent, all the way up to the new Avidines and Garmin stuff, that air data is sent out to those navigators. Now we get really cool because the navigator uses the winds to calculate all your turns. And it also draws a holding pattern to procedure turns based off of the winds. So that's awesome. So you get the egg shape uh, holding patterns um, and the turn anticipations all based off the winds. So now we are really flying like the big boys. We got all that information that's being used uh, to figure out your flight and your turns. Your track bug, and like I, I, I kind of hit on that earlier, you know, what you're tracking across the ground. And if you're hand flying, put the track bug on top of the green Corsero, and that's going to keep desired track and track together. So we, we talked about the two knobs, uh, but the and, and the three buttons across the middle, we mentioned those a little bit, but that's basically Two on the outside are your RMI pointers, which you'll have two. So you can do your source selector for GPS one, GPS two, nav one or nav two. And the middle one is your nav source for the CDI, what's going to drive the autopilot, what's driving your navigation. And what's really cool is if you're tied in with a digital navigator, it's automatically going to switch between GPS and VLO. So you know when you shoot an ILS, as you're coming in and you activate that approach with the new WAS systems, they, they switch over automatically from GPS to, to um, uh, VLO, it automatically switches on the Aspen and it sets the inbound course for you all automatically. Super cool, very useful. Now let's talk about exactly what, what, what the, uh, max is and kind of what that brings to the table. So what did we do? So just, just so you know, and it's completely clear here, a max system is a totally different redesign system and animal from the legacy. Okay, think of it like trading in your 2007 F-150 for a 2022 F-150 and all the differences you get. And, and or like your, your TV, you got an HD TV that you, that now you traded in or, or upgraded to the uh, 4K, it's that kind of a difference. So we've done a, we did a lot of things. We've, we've, we've uh, you know, streamlined down the boards alone. We went from 20 some layers down to eight layers. Um, we've added, we've added several features that you're going to notice, um, and I'm going to talk about those. But, but it's really a totally different system outside the form factor, um, but the screen and everything else and, and behind that is all new. So what's really cool is we've added synthetic vision is standard. You don't have to pay for that anymore. It just comes with the system. Uh, we've also reduced the price of, of uh, angle of attack. That was 2000. It's now 9995 uh, to add uh, angle of attack. I highly recommend that if you have an MFD or if you're going to add an MFD, it's a nice, big, fat indicator. I'll show you in a second. But having uh, angle of attack is really nice for the first thousand feet and last thousand feet. It's a great stall awareness uh, system. The dual aiding AHARs is, well, all that means is if you get a pedo blockage today and you have a legacy Aspen system, it's going to red X your unit. If you have it to, with the new Max, it just red X's their speed and everything else keeps on going, is all that means. There's no backups required with a 2000 system, so a uh, two screens or three screens. Um, there's no backups required. So you can literally cut a new panel, put in the two Aspen or three Aspen screens and be done. Really clean, really streamlined. And, uh, you know, as you could, as you could guess, it's, uh, it's been very popular that the 2000 maxes have really taken off because guys are able to clean up their systems. They're pulling out um, all of the old, old steam gauges. Now with a single screen, you can still pull out your vacuum pump, pull out your attitude indicator and, really clean up uh, your panel as well. So before you had to keep a backup attitude airspeed altimeter. Now you're gonna keep backup turn and bank airspeed altimeter. So that means attitude indicator goes away, 
And if you're not driving boots or something else with a vacuum system, vacuum pump goes away. So that's grabbing a lot of traction as well. And you can do that with an E5 or the Pro Max. So for those of you with existing systems, as we saw a while ago with that video, Valerie's, it's a plug and play. You pull it out, you put the, put the new Max in, we ship it ahead of time. It's $49.95, and I'll talk about more about pricing in a little bit. But I mean, for the money, guys, and for what you get, it's, it's pretty incredible. So you're going you're gonna to put this system in, and the avionics shop is going to add one wire because you really want this wire. It's an option, but you want it, and it's going to give you the audio to your headset. And again, back to uh, the, the other, other thing added, another big, big one is the font and window enlargement. So when I'm selecting something, my, my font size turns about three times larger, turns magenta, and it makes it real obvious for what I'm trying to select, what I'm looking at. We've added METAR flags on the MFD, on the, on the moving map. We've also added AGL readout, how high am I above the ground? Valerie didn't have to worry about that very much living in Florida. But if you're, you know, if she's up at say Heaven's Landing in, in Georgia, or if you're out, you know, in the mountains or anywhere else, how high am I above the ground does matter. We added a, a, a chart and countdown timer page. Okay, I'm gonna go back up because my, our, this is a good story. Our chief pilot, who is a, a, a Marine helicopter pilot, said he wanted a timer page. I'm like, dude, we don't need timer page. We got timers everywhere. I use this every single flight because in that Malibu, I got to be able to cool down my turbos and I go from you know from when I'm going from 30 inches to 25 inches I do the two minute increments you know uh two uh two minutes um and uh you know two that ah, can't talk two inches for two minutes thank you and uh I I do the uh do the countdown and then once I land do my three minute cool down on my turbos before I shut down so I use these two timers for that and then obviously I really like to have the flight timer here and then what time did I depart Zulu so all that's really useful information. That, then the timers page is a, a useful additional feature that, that I use every single flight as much as it pains me to give him credit because <laughs> so, we fought about it uh, and he won. But anyway, uh, what else was there here? I missed out on a climate descent banana, which I'm going to talk about in a second, is... Um, is a really nice tool as well. So this here it is showing on the actual MFD, but it'll also show it on your HSI page. What that is, and again, another one of these features I use every single flight, I'll dial in whatever altitude I want to go to. So whether it's pattern altitude for the airport I'm going to, or I get a crossing restriction from ATC saying be at 6,000 feet before you get to heaven. Okay, dial in that. And as long as this arc is at the fix or before it, I know I'm going to hit that altitude that I've selected. If it's beyond it, if it's out here somewhere, I need to start go down a little faster. I can use it to go around airspace. I can use it to go, uh, if the if I've got terrain mode on, I can see, you know, where the mountains are. I can use it to go uh, clear terrain, towers, all that kind of, it's a really useful to have. It's way, way more useful than I, than I thought it was going to be kind of like the timer space, but I use that all the time. Love it. Here's your METAR flags. METARs are color-coded based off of the weather there, and blue is uh, blue skies, right, VFR. Green, still okay to go, but it's marginal. Yellow is going to be IFR, and then a magenta is going to be low IFR. So let's remember, let's do a, a, a little quick uh, review of your, your basic lesson plan here of, of, of pilotage. The marginal is one to 3,000 feet, three to five mile visibility. Anything less than that on either side is IFR. Anything more than that is going to be VFR, right? So if it's, if it's uh, you know, you still got five miles of visibility or 10 miles of visibility, but I've only got 2,000 foot ceiling, I'm still marginal. So that's a really nice, easy way to, to, to see what our, uh, what our weather is in an area. And, and as you zoom out, you can really pick out an area that, oh, this is kind of overcast in this area. This has gone really south. That's all bad IFR stuff. I want to avoid that area. And the, uh, so, so talking about the battery, I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but basically the battery, all that means for us as pilots and users is you, you have a new battery and it allows you to pull out your backups. And it also has a service life of 2,200 hours or four years and that battery is literally a couple hundred bucks or less to replace. 
So it's not a big ticket item um, in the scheme of things, but it allows us, it gains us a lot of capability from that battery. And of course, the other systems we mentioned in our, like the dual aiding AHARs in our system. One of the last things I'm gonna mention because I'm almost done here is the interface with the 3100. So what's really cool about the Genesis 3100 interface is we do a, a full, full system interface where you can do indicate airspeed control, altitude pre-select, all your mode enunciations, your flight director bars will be up here. You also have a new button instead of being the GPSS switch here, it's now VS or vertical speed control. So I can dial that in and I can adjust my vertical speed using my lower right hand knob on the ASPA or I can do it on the control head here. So a lot of the things I can do here, I can also do on the 3100 control head. I, I, I flew this a little bit, super impressive. It won't let you underspeed or overspeed the airplane. It's got, a, it's got envelope protection and it's got a really nice, uh, just a smooth flow. So when you take off, you just engage the autopilot and it holds the aircraft like you left it. And then you decide, do I wanna go heading mode, nav, GPSS mode here, um, and then do I want to climb using indicate airspeed or vertical speed? No, I want to climb using indicate airspeed. And then I can adjust right here up and down my speed. So I start off at whatever, whatever speed, you know, we're at, and then I can reach over here and I can adjust here, or I can come over here on my Aspen and dial in a speed. Super simple. And once I get to my altitude, it automatically levels off for you. And I want to start down, I dial in whatever altitude I want using the Aspen. I can roll that down to whatever, and I hit vertical speed. And I can make small tune adjustments here, or I can make small tune adjustments on the Aspen to go, you know, four, five, six, 800 feet a minute, however, however fast you want to go down. Super cool, really nice digital autopilot. Um, and it's only a 1995 unlock for the interface between the Aspen and the 3100. So to break down our systems price wise, the Pro Max is $9,995, and like we said, that includes synthetic vision. Comes with a two-year warranty. Uh, the 2000 Max, with the ability to remove all backups, is $16,995. And the 2500, all three screens, which I you saw my panels, that's what I put in my aircraft, is uh, $20,995. And what I like of having three, everybody says, why do you need three screens? I'm like, because it doubles your MFD capability, right? I can, I can be showing something here, well, I'm looking at something over here and for different phases of the flight, I like, you know, different layouts. I may have full screen map while I'm looking at my AOA indicator and I have an AOA indicator right here and terrain and traffic up here, see if I'm running anybody or anything and then have my uh, AOA indicator here for the first thousand feet and last thousand feet. I have a nice big moving map over here. So there, there's, there's lots of different things, lots of different capability. I may have a, my, my approach place and tax diagrams over here. Um, for different phases, but it's but it's really nice having that that extra MFD capability and having that, that double in your uh, MFD capability. So for those of you with existing systems, here's the breakdown for the trade-in. And again, like you saw in Valerie's video, we're going to ship you a brand new system ahead of time. It comes with a two-year warranty, and it's single screens forty nine ninety five, dual screens seventy nine ninety five, and if you have a twenty five hundred system, it's eighty nine ninety five. And it does come with a two-year warranty and includes synthetic vision on all screens. So to end with, I'm just going to say that around about 15 years with Aspen, uh, we've got over 20,000 systems out there. We're going to take really good care of you. Um, we're a uh, customer service product support-based company, and uh, we, we sure appreciate you. Feed our family, feed our kids, all that good stuff. Um, but uh, And we're here to help. So... With that being said, uh, Valerie, I'm going to kind of let you uh, take over here for a second. And you, know, you heard me chit-chatting and maybe give, uh, you know, your experience uh, flying a little bit while we get some get some questions going and, and uh, talk, get some uh, folks, be a good time if you want. Use the Q&A and, and click on that and, and feel free to ask your questions. But uh, yeah, go ahead, Valerie, if you want and talk about your flying experience using the Aspen and kind of what you've done there. That'd be great. Yes. Um Thank you, Scott. Great, uh, great presentation. Actually, from now on, I'm going to use the timer as well. Uh, it's it's been there, you know. I've looked at it, but as you know, as you know, we have a turbo charge, and I have to let it cool down. That's uh, that's a great feature to have. 
uh, love our angle of attack and, and love seeing traffic on, on, uh, on the Aspen. Um, it, it's just, it's just a fantastic, fantastic panel. The ultimate, uh, max panel, the 2,500 really happy with it. I don't really see, uh, any questions. Uh, Jill earlier asked me what was my favorite, uh, feature on the 2500 system and i answered uh it's 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 really hard to pick just one but um as you mentioned love uh shooting the uh ils it's so easy i see the glide slope the green diamond uh the localizer really really simple to follow Love to hear the uh, the annunciator uh, when I hit my altitude, and that kind of screams at me uh, ahead of time, and uh, tells me that I'm going to reach my uh, my altitude. So that's a great feature as well. Um, and you mentioned also the uh, the vacuum. We have to keep our vacuum because we do have food, so we have. Uh, uh, we have sure. our vacuum uh, still on our system. Yeah, I, I've got uh, I do the same thing. I got yeah. I, I keep my vacuum for boots, but <laughs> but but just, yeah. and for, there's a lot that, that don't, uh, Valerie. And and just so you guys know, it's not a little bit of weight. It's about 15 pounds, I think, Mike. If I'm answering that right, it's probably 12 to 15 pounds of weight that gets pulled out when you do like a single vacuum system. Is that does that sound right? Sure does. Yeah. So it's it's more than you think, and also of course you're gonna gain a little bit of horsepower when you pull out those vacuum pumps and, and all that maintenance um uh but anyway mike did you want to did you want to hit any of these questions live or, or talk about some of the, sure. the uh the grass? that'd be great yep sure so uh, i'll run through uh there's a couple questions that i uh, that i'm going to answer live and some of the uh more common stuff that uh wasn't really super specific i'll, I'll cover that as well um, first thing, uh, when you order a Pro Max system, for instance, yes, the uh, the RSM is included with that. Uh, ACU is typically included as well. If you don't need it, then that can be subtracted out of the system and uh, save yourself some money. Um, some of the uh, other questions that we had uh, were uh, unit availability. Uh, right now, we're at roughly two weeks on a, a new Max system. Uh, the trade-in for new maxes are a little bit more than that. They've uh, come down a lot from what they used to be, but uh, we're catching up with a big backload, a backlog of uh, orders on those. So they're down to uh, about 30 days. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's a good point, Mike. I forgot to mention that. That's that's really yeah. good. Our times are are we we got we got caught up. We had our we had our struggles like everybody else in the industry is kind of having, and we 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 were fortunate and got ahead of that. So. Uh, yeah, like he's saying that 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 plan on two two weeks, one to two weeks on on new orders and uh, thirty days or less on max trade ins. So yeah, go ahead. And Mike. Uh, one of these other questions is about the Garmin GFC five hundred autopilot. That's been a, a very common question, very popular. We hear that all the time. Uh, and the answer is we'd love to do an interface with that autopilot, but Garmin holds the keys to the castle on it, so they have to be willing to work with us. I th they've been moving in the right direction over the last few years, and they've worked with us on some other projects. But what they really need is they need to hear from you folks. So reach out to them through their website, through their sales managers. Let them know that you've got Aspen screens or you want Aspen screens, but you want the 500. And uh, encourage them to uh, to work with us on it because we'll we'll we jump on that as soon as they said yes. Uh, that's one of the things that's at the top of our want to do list. Yep, for um, sure. I mean, it helps yep. sell more autopilots, helps us, uh, helps everybody. So, yep. Yep. And uh, there was a question here about uh, operation of the Max displays versus the legacy displays. And they are essentially the same, other than a, a couple of the new features like the, uh, the altitude uh, banana uh, that wasn't there. But the overall functionality of the display works exactly the same. So if you're familiar with it, uh, you'll be able to pick it up very quickly. Just throwing, scrolling through some other uh, yeah, questions yeah, here. Well, well, you're doing that. Um, the, uh, you know, you're flying in and out of uh, a couple of unique places there, Valerie. Um, with with regard, I mean, really a good contrast between Heaven's Landing and, and landing out on the coast, or when you're going to the Bahamas. And I mean, you're using the system and 
and have it. And how, how many hours do you think you've got on, you know, just brown numbers using, using the Aspen uh, 2,500 at this point? Uh, I average about a uh, hundred uh, hours a year. Okay. So, okay. so I, so you know, round it up. Yeah. yeah. So, so talk to us about flying to heaven's landing. I think a lot of, a lot of people out there have seen, you know, videos of, of heaven's landing. It's a, it's a really unique, cool strip up in Northern Georgia in the mountains there. And, and, um, you know, having the Aspen and, you know, having the, uh, terrain and having synthetic vision, all that else, you know, talk to us about that a little bit, if you could. Yeah. Well, the synthetic vision is, is really a huge, um, uh, huge deal when we fly to heaven's landing hold on one second my husband is in the background and i i hear myself it's kind of hard to focus um so yeah flying to heaven's landing is is a is great um with the aspen and uh it's a, already a really hard airport to find um but it makes it really easy flying with uh with the aspen especially the 2500 gives me a, a lot more uh clarity on where everything is with traffic and, and everything else really definitely a big situational awareness with uh, the aspen 2500 okay well that is that's awesome then now you you recently um jumped over the bahamas um which is one of my favorite places too i used to go go over there quite a bit i haven't done as much recently but um and all, all the, the the bohemian islands and getting it out of there is is pretty okay and it's, i mean obviously it's displayed on your aspen and shows up pretty yep good and yeah every, yeah everything is is great everything shows up on the aspen okay. um we uh we fly to uh west end freeport bimini uh we haven't ventured too too much on the outer islands yet but uh being ambassadors now really uh, will open up uh, more islands uh in the near future hopefully uh hopefully you can join oh uh, uh, yeah no soon. kidding that'd be great twist my arm yeah well that's great yeah well good valerie mike do we have any more questions before we uh, start pulling throttles back here a little bit yeah, we have a couple more here. There's uh, there's a couple people that didn't know uh, how to enable the uh, altitude intercept banana. Uh, that's done in the menu. Um, if if any of these features that Scott's talked about uh, should be there and you're not seeing them, you can uh, drop us uh, an email or fill out one of the uh, the web forms on the Aspen website, and uh, we can get back to you with like pages right out of the pilot's guide, most likely to show you how to do it. Be happy to help with that. Um, okay. let's see what else do we have. Well, We've got a couple, gonna, couple yeah. others. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. You're, you're on, you're on. Yeah. A couple others here. All right. So, uh, he, customer has a single pro max 1000. What would I need to buy to delete all the analog gauges? So you, to do that, you'd need to add an MFD 1000 max. And once you do that, you can get rid of everything except for the whiskey compass, really clean the panel up. Scott, you want to talk? Do you have the? Did you have the price for uh, an MFD, or was it all uh, multi-screen yeah, systems? So you want to add uh, add an MFD um, to an existing Pro Max, or we're going to trade in a single screen for two screens? He already has a Pro Max and wants to uh, get rid of all the rest of the analog gauges, so he'd be adding the MFD one thousand. Okay, yeah, so we can do that. Um, you're you're going to be looking at eighty four ninety five to add an MFD one thousand. Um, and that, like Mike's saying, you know, no backups required and all the, all the functions features we just talked about. So let's see. So the, uh, AO question about the angle of attack or the AOA, it does require an in-flight calibration and typically we expect the installer to go along so they can sign it off because that is part of the job they're doing. Uh, I have heard of a few cases where they've handed somebody the unlock card and the procedure and said, have a nice day, but that's not really how our, uh, how we intend for it to no, go don't down. Let them do that. And, uh, and, and yeah. a good point to that, Mike, real quick, is that, that that AOA is at that point, it's calibrated to your wing. So it's not a, it's it's not a oh, here it is and, and you're done. You, you literally go out, you do three different speeds and it, it calibrates the AOA to your wing and it's also got two chevrons on it. So one is clean, one's dirty. So you got one gear and flaps up, one's gear and flaps down. So it's, it's literally calibrated to your wing plus the, uh, the clean and dirty configuration of the aircraft, which is really awesome. 
I use it every time I fly. I like to add also on our video on the uh, Aspen um, installation, we do um, have a little um, presentation on how the calibration is working. So if you check it out, you'll see exactly how it goes. And the installer, Garrett, uh, who uh, flew with me, really explains in detail how uh, everything is done. And one more question here about the uh, the 2500 Max, which is the three screen Max system. Uh, just confirming that yes, you can remove the rest of your steam gauges. And I'll put one footnote next to that. If uh, if you have an autopilot that requires an attitude input or a turn coordinator input, uh, then you may need to keep the turn. Well, you would need to keep keep the turn coordinator, but it could be blind mounted behind the panel, um, or you could leave it in the panel where it is. But uh, yeah, the 2500 or the 2000 max, both uh, will allow you to remove steam gauges. Um, the question about the brightness on the max system. Uh, the, the max screens are definitely, they have more brightness, they have more color depth, and they can also show those colors at a lower brightness as well. For you folks that are flying at night, you can turn that screen way down, um, much lower brightness to the, the uh, compared to the legacy yeah. screens. Good. And then the last thing I'll mention, the uh, Aero Cruise 100, a uh, couple of questions in here asking about the integration with that. We do have a, we do currently have integration. Um, as far as the altitude pre-select goes, um, is, is not today, but um, hopefully something that's in the uh, next uh, software revision. So something we're working on. Yeah, and there's uh, one question here that kind of, uh, is, is a follow-up to my, my last answer. This, the, the EA100 uh, is the attitude gyro replacement. So if you, let's say you have a, a, a Century or a King autopilot that uses an attitude indicator and you want to pull those steam gauges out, what you use is the, our EA100. It's just another adapter that goes behind the panel somewhere. And uh, what it does is it converts the digital attitude you see on the Aspen screen into something that the autopilot can understand. Uh, you'd need one of those and an ACU. So in that particular case, you'd have two adapters. Okay. Mike, do you have a, uh, is there an email? I, I forgot to put that on slides. Is there an email or a contact folks, folks could contact you and your team at? Sure. Yeah, they, they can send that to uh, field service engineers, all one word, at aspenavionics.com. Put that in the uh, field service engineers? Correct. And I'll put that in the uh, uh, chat here. I mean, the uh, Q&A. OK. Well, with that, I think we've, we've used up our hour and then some. And again, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Valerie, thanks for being our special guest today. We, we really appreciate your input and, and uh, your stories. And um, any, anything else you'd like to add or say before we uh, close it out? Uh Thank you so much, Scott. It was great to be on. I really appreciate the invitation. And I uh, can't wait to uh, fly again. Our next flight is going to be this uh, coming Friday. We're going to Heaven's Landing. Very nice. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for joining us. If you do have any more questions, uh, reach out to Mike and his team or, or, and, my, or, and or myself. Um, and also our website, aspenavionics.com and uh look forward to hearing from you and we again appreciate your time thanks everybody hey, for joining scott. us hey scotty i just wanted to add one more thing before we sign off here Absolutely. um again i wanted to for those who missed it they will this uh will be rebroadcast on aspen's youtube channel as well as through a link through the aspen video library which is a uh link on aspen's homepage at aspenavionics.com or if you want to, you know, okay, I'll get it later on this afternoon, but you can email me at Perry, and that's he's and Papa, E R I dot coin, spelled Charlie Oscar Yankee November Echo at aspenavionics.com. Um, again, thank you all for joining us and uh, have a great day. All right. See you. Thanks. Thank you.